so hello everyone welcome to the most awaited video before you play a game it is very important to know all the rules of the game in order to win and when it comes to healthcare it becomes critical to know all the rules and regulation belonging to healthcare as it affects all our health rapid advancement of cutting edge medical technology it is very difficult to keep track on each and every innovations and medication and clearly define them in the purview of efficacy and safety by the regulatory authority therefore in the year 2019 the ministry of health and family welfare government of india bought a major overhaul to the drugs and cosmetic rules of 1945 by introducing the ndct rules of 2019 these rules play a major role in promoting clinical research and streamlining all the definitions and rules and regulations so that there is comprehensive understanding of all the procedures and practices involved in clinical research these rules directly have a significant impact on the drugs approved and as a result we are going to look at all the major rules and highlights and significant areas of ndct rules 2019 to help our understanding of the regulatory requirement in the indian scenario and to pursue a clinical research career so without further ado let's start this video The focus of this session is to capture the critical highlights of the NDCT rule 2019. Please note we are not going to go into the depth of all the rules of 2019 but we are going to focus on capturing the highlights of the NDCT rules 2019. Our focus shall be on the major changes that occurred in drugs and cosmetic rules of 1945 and we are going to look at the significant impact on the clinical research industry. This particular video is for students and professional who wants to stay updated on the clinical research rules and trials that occur in india as well as this will be a very critical and important video for interview preparation and your clinical research career as these are the major updates to our industry in terms of dnc rules and these are oftenly asked questions in the interviews and as you progress through your clinical research career you should know them now we are going to see the four major highlights of the ndct rule 2019 first of all there is a specific provision for the new drug or the investigational new drug for which the clinical trials will be conducted and that has to be a through a proper channel granted by the central licensing authority that is cdaco next is the oversight of the clinical trial at the site level is defined as the responsibility of the ethics committee and ethics committee has to do this oversight periodically next thing is the validity of the permission to conduct a clinical trial so now the validity period of the clinical trial shall be of 2 years from the issue date of the permission and it can only be extended by the central licensing authority next is that once the trial is completed the post trial access of the investigational new drug the sponsor has to provide the subject medication free of cost before that it was very difficult for the subject to procure those particular medication and maintain their good health so these are four major highlights in case anyone ask you in the interview these are the highlights you should mention next is now you should know that there have been a very specific applications and for permissions to conduct the clinical trial if we see them so uh, one of the important application uh, are form ct04 and ct06 so form ct04 stands for application to conduct the clinical trial for new drug or the investigational new drug so that is the application and approval or the permission to conduct a clinical trial for the new drug is form ct06 so you apply from ct04 and you get approval in form of ct06 next is if you want to apply for a baba trial then you Uh, fill form CT04 and you get the approval in the form of form CT07. So whenever uh, you come across these terminologies, you should clearly remember that which particular form stands for the application and which particular stands for the permission. So these forms are elaborately mentioned in Schedule 8. So if you see your, so there is a particular uh, form for manufacturing of the new drug. So you have to apply through form CT08, and you get the permission through form CT11. Okay, so that is the thing. Next thing is, if you want to register a BABE center, you apply through form CT08, and you get approval through form CT09. If you want to import a new drug or the investigation new drug, 
from abroad then you have to complete form ct16 and you get approval through form ct17 okay if you want to import a particular drug for the purpose of sale and distribution then that has to go through form ct18 and the approval through form ct19 and you have might have observed that uh, some people have a rare uh, medical condition or who are suffering from life threatening medical condition so a medical officer from a government uh, hospital he can ask for the permission to import that particular drug in the form of form ct25 and the approval shall be given in form ct24 uh, and 25 and uh, if you see under the rule 23 Uh, the permission to conduct or to initiate the clinical trial is only valid for 2 years if you don't start your trial within that particular period then you have to get the approval again and you have to focus uh, on form ct4a that is this is the automatic approval form so what does automatic approval mean that once you submit your application and they don't comply within the 30 days then you get the automatic approval so please note these are 30 working days so that particular automatic approval would be form ct ct4a the next is the mechanism for compensation uh, procedure in case of sae or death in clinical trial so you should also know that what is the procedure when you have an sae so what is the compensation procedure and who all is involved so there has to be a report submitted by the uh, investigator there has to be a report submitted by the ethics committee then it goes through the central licensing authority and finally the pharmaceutical company pays the uh, person affected in the clinical trial so this is just the procedure for your reference now the major change came for ethics committee under chapter 3 so first major change is in terms of proportion so under the ndct rules 2019 at least 50% of the members should be from outside the institute or the hospital so this is in order to maintain a proportionality and uniformity of the decision next thing is for the chairperson so the chairperson of the ethics committee of that particular hospital or the institute should be outside and not affiliated to that particular institute next thing is the member secretary of that particular institute should be affiliated to that particular institute so please remember that the chairperson after 2019 shall always be from outside the institute and the member secretary from in the institute the fourth update would be the ec member training now before the ec member training was conducted but the frequency of the training and the kind of training and the records for training so th- frequently the ec members have to go to gcp trainings and the record shall be uh, kept the same and each and every member should have passed that particular training session next thing is registration of the ethics committee so ethics committee registration has been extended for 5 years and renewal of that particular Uh, registration shall be done 90 days prior in the form of form ct02 okay so you submit for the ec registration for ct01 and you get the approval for in the form of form ct02 okay last but not the least uh, it comes for the independent ethics committee so if your particular institute does not have the ethics committee then you can approach any ethics committee within the 15 50 km sorry 50 km radius wherever the ec is uh, available there you can go and you get your approval so this is because the number of ethics committee are quite less and if a sponsor wants to conduct a clinical trial then the availability of the ethics committee uh, can be reached into the 50 km radius so these are a very critical highlights for the ethics committee in ndct rules so now what is the significance of ndct rule why are these rules important and what changes have they made so first and foremost they have clearly defined uh, new drugs so which helps the regulatory authority or the cdso in clearly identifying the drug the mechanism of action what it, it is going to be used and it becomes the central uh, it becomes easy for the central licensing authority to review and approve the particular drug next thing is compensation so as you might have seen the compensation procedure is quite Uh, big and it takes a lot of time for the subject to get the compensation so removal of the compensation clause in ndct rule 2019 is been a great help 
for the participants and uh, overall the clinical trials conducted in India and whenever an SAE occurs and when the EC gives their opinion within the 15 or 30 days, you get 60% of the uh, compensation after the EC opinion. So that makes uh, compensation uh, procedure quite faster and easier. Next is the approval timeline. So all uh, approval shall be granted within 30, uh, 30 working days. Now this particular faster approval process has put accountability on the regulator also and it attracts a lot of uh, companies, a lot of uh, person who wants to conduct a clinical trial and it makes the approval process robust and this particular mechanism is very helpful for the industry. Now these particular NDCT rules have made the Indian clinical trial market very competitive and a sponsor no longer uh, focus on China only. They can come to Indian market also and conduct clinical trial. The NDCT rules have also removed the requirement for the redundant trial and this helps uh, the foreign players in the Indian pharma market uh, significantly. So these were the significance of NDCT rule 2019. Next is if you want to pursue this glamorous career of clinical research then please go and enroll yourself in this particular course which is uh, conducted by Clinical Aim Research Institute. They have a fabulous uh, course available and uh, it can help you in achieving success in clinical research. So please go ahead and give them a call. And finally it is uh, very important that you learn you think what you have learned and you succeed so please keep learning please keep thinking and succeeding and make sure that you like share and subscribe this video and we'll see you soon in the next one thank you